Hello everyone and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Today what I wanted to talk to you all about is some open source web design tools. So let's go take a look. So if I open up this tool, it's called SeamMonkey. We can actually go ahead and create some pages in this. So I'm gonna go new and then we'll say composer page. And now we can make our own simple web page right here. So I can insert some things. So for example, we could insert a form. So I'm gonna just call this form the test. We'll call the action URL test.php. I'm gonna say it's a post that we're gonna use. I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have a form here in this box, it's empty. And now I could come in here and I could insert, let's say, a text area. <clears throat> we're gonna just call this field name text. And I'm going to say 12 by 24, which is this size box, okay? And let's go ahead and we'll insert a button. As you can see, this is pretty easy. Now the button, I gotta say, I've got, I've got some issues with it. I can't figure out why, but the, the actual text doesn't seem to populate. So if I do like, like we can do test and see there's no, there's like a name, but this is like the ID, I guess. And I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see it gives me the button, but it just gives me it there. So if I view source, I have a button with nothing in it. So I'm gonna actually call this submit by just switching to the code, which we can do at any time. And now I can switch back to preview. Now we have a button and it all works. And I wonder, can we, so it doesn't seem like we can easily drag it. What does this do? Choose the color. So maybe we make a larger font choice. Okay, I don't know if that, I don't think that actually did anything. Anyway, but so you can see there's some different things we can do in here. I could come in here. Oh, now the font's working. It just wasn't in the button. Okay. So now let's go ahead and let's put a link to, let's say, Google in here. So the text of the link is google.com. And then I'm going to actually link to it by typing it in. So HTTP. Awesome. I'm going to hit OK. And now we have a link to Google. So as you can see, we can do a bunch of different stuff. We can insert a table. You know, there's all these things that go on and on. But the point of the matter is it does work. Okay, and so we could save this, we could do whatever we want. I'm gonna hit don't save and close out of it. Now let's look at our next program. So our next program is called Blue Griffin. So I'm gonna open that up real quick. So this is another piece of open source software and let's create a page. So here's our first page. And I, one thing I like about this one is you get a, a dual editor. So I, as somebody that writes HTML a lot, know what HTML is, and I may want to write it and then see what happens on the other side. So maybe I come in here and I adjust the title, and now it says test, okay? So, you know, I can do stuff like that. But you can come in here and do stuff on your own. So I could go, let's write my little test paragraph here, hit a new line, and it's made a paragraph for me right there, okay? Pretty handy. Now, the dialogues on some of the stuff seems to be kind of buggy. I'm not sure if it's something to do with mine. I tried reinstalling it and it still happened. But like, for example, if I try to do video, it just doesn't let me, no matter what I do, go over here and click OK, even after selecting both a poster image and a video file. So if you want to do video, you'd have to do it by hand by just putting the video tag in. And I don't remember if it auto-completes. Let's find out. Does it? I think it does. Yeah. So if I go video, hold on. If I go video, yeah, see, it auto-completes. So now I've got a video, and if I was to do, I always want to misspell controls. There, we have a video player, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. But anyway, we, we can do that. We can do audio. I did test and that does work. And it's similar to video where you just come into audio and you select the file and it places a player there. So it's actually pretty cool. We can do, again, just like I showed you before, a form. And again, this is kind of similar functionality. And I'm going to just, again, kind of do the same kind of settings. We're going to say it's a post, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click 
OK. All right, so now that we've got a form, we can insert some different objects into it. So I can show you that as an example real quick. So if I go Insert, Form, I could say put a button again. And we're going to call this, we're going to just go ahead and call this, well, I'm trying to call it test. OK. And then I'm going to come in here. And let's see. I guess that's all right. So now we have this, but I can actually type in this one, and that makes a lot more sense. I think that's what the other one was trying to do too, but it didn't cooperate. So again, this is very visual. So, you know, look, I could build all of this by hand, and actually I'd prefer to because this is taking me longer using all this UI to do it than to do this. But this is kind of for somebody that wants to build their own statically defined web pages without needing to know HTML. Right? This is something, it's like, oh, I want a table. Go to insert a table pick a size of table and look at that. Now we have our own table and I can even adjust it so I could make it like this and make the cells bigger. And if I wanted to put something in one, I just go and type and type and type and see, it's all automated. Now see, this is something again, I could code on my own and I'm getting the error I was getting with it before. So I like this program and I've used it before, and I think they just have got a buggy version, because I don't remember it being this buggy, but this one, whenever this started coming up, I had to just completely restart the program. But that's really all I wanted to show you anyway, so I'm gonna just exit the program. This is my personal favorite code editor, and it's called VS Code. So for example, I could come in here, create a new file, and I'm gonna just say, give me a new text file, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change it to HTML now. Okay, and this will give me autocomplete. And it really comes in handy. So I can go HTML, click on that, or hit tab, and look at that. Or is it enter? I think it's hit enter, actually. So let me look real quick. I think it's, it's hit enter. Okay, so now, again, we could do a video here. And so we could either put, like, multiple sources, source tags in here, like this, right? Which this one didn't actually autocomplete, but a lot of them does. Okay. And we can actually come in here and we could do that. We could add an image, you know, IMG, head enter. So you can see this kind of helps me. And one of the things that's really cool about this actually, if I save it, which I'm not going to do, you can do, there's a extension called live server you can get for this, which I really like. Uh, so right here it is. This is really cool because it will basically let me immediately run some code, as you can see here in their demo. Whatever you change over here automatically updates over here. See? This is source control. It's really nice because it integrates with Git. So when I'm doing Git, it will show me in my files over here. I don't have any open, but it will show me, oh, this file has been changed and such with different color coding. So anyway, everybody, that is a couple of my picks for open source web development tools. VS Code specifically is not exactly a web development tool. It's more of just a generalized code editor. It doesn't have to be HTML. It could be other things. But regardless, I thought this would be an interesting video to bring up. Uh, these days, a lot of people, just so everyone knows, I think it's good to point out, might use something like WordPress or Squarespace, something that is designed to where you just edit it in the web page itself and you don't actually need to have any external software, but I get the impression some of us Linux users would rather do things maybe still on desktop software, some of us. Uh, for me, I have to say, uh, you know, I kind of prefer to custom code things when I can, but th that's my personal taste, and then I just use VS Code a lot, but regardless of how you do it, and in my case, my website is partially automated, and then partially non-automated, uh, where I code HTML templates, and then the templates get basically filled out by the a computer program. But anyway, maybe I'll talk about that in another video if you're interested. It's also open source software. I didn't write it. But anyway, everybody, I'd love to hear what your thoughts is in the comments about these different code editors and if you build your own web pages in general, because I think building web pages for yourself is really cool. I have my own personal website. I just, I think it's great to have a website, something you control in the modern era and that is your place on the web that people can find you and what you care about. But anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching Open Source Tonight. And I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye, everybody. And action.